Hello everyone, my name is Nakoba and welcome back to Satisfactory. Today we're going to be taking a look at a design for a plutonium processing plant. This is a very late game build, so it will rely on a strong logistics network to provide all the materials you're going to need. Everything we're going to be talking about is timestamped in the description below, so let's get into it. Now this plant was designed as a companion for a uranium nuclear power plant, so it has the same 10 by 22 footprint and will make use of all of the nuclear waste from that power plant. You can also piggyback on that plant's water supply, so if you're building this paired with that design, you won't need additional water. You will need a number of resources though. In addition to the 30 nuclear waste and 24 units of water, you'll need 48 units of nitrogen gas, 41.1 silica, 31 copper ingots, 17 aluminum ingots, 20 steel ingots, 5 keterium ingots, and 6 iron ingots per minute. The output of this plant is 0.18 plutonium fuel rods, or about one rod every six minutes, which we will be sinking in order to avoid the buildup of nuclear waste, but you could also send into a plutonium power plant. We'll be breaking the build down into three sections. The first will be producing our non-fizzle uranium. This is going to require two blenders, a constructor, and a refinery. Send your sulfur, along with some water, into the refinery to make sulfuric acid. Send the iron into a constructor to make iron plates, which we'll then send into our first blender with some additional water and nitrogen gas to create nitric acid. The sulfuric acid, the nitric acid, some silica, and your uranium waste will then be sent into another blender to produce the non-fizzle uranium. The output water from this process can be fed into the previous blender and refinery to supply some of the water needed for those machines. In our next section, we'll be producing plutonium cells in a particle accelerator. This will require the non-fizzle uranium from the first section, along with some aluminum casings which we'll be making from aluminum ingots in a constructor. The plutonium cells will be sent into a manufacturer in our final section. The last section provides steel beams, heat sinks, and electromagnetic control rod. The steel beams are made in a constructor and sent directly into our manufacturer alongside our plutonium cells. To get the heat sinks, we start by sending some copper into a constructor to make the copper sheets, and copper and aluminum into an assembler to make all clad aluminum sheets, which are then combined in a second assembler to make the heat sink. To craft our final component, the electromagnetic control rods, we start by sending some copper and caterium bars into constructors to make copper sheets and quickwire, and then into an assembler to make AI limiters. We also send some copper into another constructor to make wire, and steel into a constructor to make steel pipes, which are then combined in an assembler to make stators. The stators and AI limiters are then combined to make our control rods in a third assembler. Finally, all of our components are combined in a manufacturer and sent into an awesome sink for deletion. And that's it. While this is a complicated build, it's no more complicated than, say, a nuclear power plant that it might be cleaning up after for. So it's pretty reasonable to put this together as long as you have the logistics to support it, and that is the greatest challenge. So I recommend using a depot in order to help make that process much more manageable. That's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Leave a like if you have, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. My name is Ben Dakoba, and I hope you have an efficient day. We'll see you soon.